Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to this hearing of the Budget and Finance Committee for Monday, September 29th, 2014. I'm Paul Precorian, Chair of the Committee, and I'm joined by uh, my colleagues, Council Members Bonin and Englander, and we are ready to begin. Um, anybody who'd like to offer comment on any of the items on the agenda or general public comment about items within the jurisdiction of this committee, please fill out one of these cards and bring it forward. Uh, right now I only have one card, um, but if you would like to offer comment, please bring it forward. So um, members, I'd like to suggest as uh, a consent candidate item number six, I was also going to propose item number seven, but Mr. Bailey has uh, submitted a card, so we'll take Mr. Bailey's card on item number seven first. Um, but if there's no objection on item number six, uh, seeing none, we'll go ahead and uh, approve. The, oh, it's okay. Yeah, we'll approve the recommendation uh, to receive and file. Receive and file that, that matter, and then that'll bring us to item number seven. And Mr. Bailey, why don't you go ahead and come on forward, provide your comment. Item number seven is the City Administrative Officer Report relative to the, to the first construction projects report for fiscal year 2014-15. I do want to mention that our office released an addendum to this. I do want to mention that our office released an addendum to the report, uh, which you should have in front of you for one uh, additional project. Okay. Mr. Bailey, welcome. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Council Members, Glenn Bailey. Um, I am one of the neighborhood council budget advocates this year, but I am speaking as an individual. I wanted to comment regarding uh, one of the items in this report, and I don't have the supplemental, but I don't think it's related. Um, it's letter D, the barham Coenga corridor project, um, and it has to do with the the deobligation amount of 924,000. From the way I'm reading the report, and maybe the report isn't written in as much detail, but um, I'm showing, it's indicating an original grant of 1.495 million from Metro, which leaves $571,000 um, unaccounted for. And my question is, and I know it's public comment, you don't answer questions, but I think you should ask a question, is what happened to $571,000 um, that was granted by Metro, and I contrast that with the uh, letter G project, which is the San Fernando Mission Boulevard project, um, which was one million five hundred thirty-two thousand, and the difference in the obligated amount there was only eleven thousand nine hundred forty-one dollars. So, similar projects, both about one point five million dollars. One difference in the deobligation is 11, 11, almost $12,000. The other one is $571,000. And I think that you should ask why there's such a variation uh, in that money. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can we ask the CAO's office to speak to those issues? Uh, Sure, and uh, I think the Bureau of Engineering is here as well. Uh, okay, they could perfect. probably speak a little bit more in detail to those issues. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Ramnik Mangra. I'm with Bureau of Engineering Street Program. Um, first, uh, let's uh, take a look at Barham Coinga project, uh, the one that uh, about uh, $571,000 that we basically, this uh, Barham Coinga project is um, MTA Core 4 project. Um, I think it's uh, 1999, and um, we received the funding in 2007. Subsequently, we started designing uh, the project, um, in, you know, pre-design, design, environmental, all that. And um, as we got into design, we realized that uh, actually Barham Coenga project is um, at Barham and Coenga Boulevard. If you are familiar with this. Um, going up about east and west side uh, at the Barham on one on freeway. And to widen this project, it, it, the pro project scope was to provide the right turn and left turn lanes. And to widen it, we needed to get an encroachment permit from Caltrans. And the, this just kind of led to the problem. You know, the existing 
walls are historic. The, the whole site is historic. You don't need to get into the okay. engineering details. Just if Maybe. you can go over the budgetary overview, you had an original uh, total project cost of $2.4 million for that. So if you can just explain why the deobligation of 924000 Because this is a proxy funding, uh, Metro would reimburse the uh, amount spent by the staff for Barham Koenga project, whereas the San Fernando Mission project, um, it was a federally funded project, so unless we had uh, E76 for construction phase authorization, we could not spend that money, and it was allocated for construction only. Therefore, we could not ask for reimbursement for that um, expenditure on the San Fernando Mission project. Okay. All right. So the CAO's recommendations um, are uh, in your um, memo, members, and then there's uh, the amendment that's before us. Yes. Uh, Any other questions or comments? Mr. No, just going to say, uh, for the, uh, on the addendum is for a project related to um, uh, using MICLA funds uh, to provide those to general services department maintenance division to re retrofit the central library's um, uh, HVAC unit for uh, the, as part of the QECB projects. Okay. Any other questions on this, members? The overall Mr. Item. Blumenfield, yes. Yeah, a couple questions on the overall item. Okay, go uh, ahead. Not necessarily on the, the Barham issue. Go ahead. Let's fire away. Okay. The, um, the West Valley building, municipal building, is not, is not listed here, but we have, like, on the Energy and Water Management Conservation Program, there's 122,000 going from CIEP to GSD. Um, and there are a number of buildings that were included, but the West Valley isn't. Same thing on the... Um, the GSD revenue sources to GSD building maintenance. There's 855 water conservation fixtures um, at 57 different municipal buildings. And my question is, in the West Valley, we already are undergoing some of the changes. We have to because of the uh, Disabilities Act changes. So we're, we're going in anyway and changing out the toilets and putting in low flow. You know, we're trying to, they have to change the configuration of the bathroom. And it just, it boggles my, understanding why we're not going adding them onto the list because we're going to end up having to pay for this twice if we don't do something like that. Um, Councilmember Bloomfield, Donna Vong with the CAO's office. Are you speaking in regards to the West Valley Police Station? No. I'm speaking with regards to the West Valley Municipal Building, with, uh, which, which is where my district office is and where there's a number of offices, and we've been told we have to. ADA requirements are saying that we have to redo the bathroom and various things. So you would think it would be a perfect time to do some of this water conservation stuff, uh, but there's. A, but what I'm told is that oh, we're not going to do nest some of that because it's too expensive to get the, you know, automatic sensors and the different things that would be with water conservation. And then I see we're spending all this money on 57 other municipal buildings, and here when you have a confluence of of interest with the the Disabilities Act and water conservation, why wouldn't we? also do these buildings at that time, or why wouldn't we prioritize a building that we already have to make the changes to, or make changes to? And maybe too specific of a question, I'm happy to have you get back to me on it, but it, it just it struck me and my staff when we've been working on this on this issue of both energy and water and, and water conservation, and, and we see all this happening everywhere else except for this that spot. Good morning, afternoon. Maria Cardenas with the CAO's office. We'll look into that specifically and report back, but just for your information, the programs that are listed on here, uh, this is just the first one that we're reporting on, so there's additional uh, buildings to be added to the programs. Okay. But specifically for West Valley, we'll look into uh, being able to do the ADA, the water conservation, at the same time that we're looking at the building. Okay, that, that would be great because I just, again, the ADA stuff is, ha is, is now, this mm -hmm. list is now. I worry about this being put off down the road and then it's one of those situations, it's kind of like when you, when you tear up a street and you have that situation and, you, and then they come up two weeks later and tear it up again because of the pipe. I hate to see that happen with water conservation and disability uh, issues. Okay. So we'll be sure to do that. To that. Okay. Uh, separate issue not related to that building, but the, the Reyes Lyons tenant improvement, the city, notice the city's paying for improvements. Why, why don't we have a landlord pay for that improvement? Hold on. What item is that? I guess while, while you're looking at it, the, the other piece I'll just add to this is um, 
you know, had a, I had a motion a while ago about trying to create a strategic plan for our uh, CIEP, for our capital improvements. Um, and I, I, I think this sort of looking at this list, and I'm sure there's good reasons for each of these things, but it just makes me even more committed to the idea that we need to get a strategic plan to justify how we're moving forward with our capital improvement projects, um, because otherwise it just kind of, it seems like a salad bowl list. When I know that there is rationale behind it, I'm not suggesting otherwise, but it would be good if we had that strategic plan in place so that when we saw a list like this, we could also see how does it fit in with our overall strategy. But in terms of the Reyes, Ly uh, Reyes Lyons building, this is the deal structure that was negotiated with the landlord. They are paying for some of the tenant improvements. Part of the tenant improvements are paying, being paid for by the city, and um, this report would authorize that payment. In terms of the strategic plan, we agree with you. We are overdue in presenting to the council um, our capital infrastructure uh, plan, our strategic plan, and we're also going to tie in the 1% for infrastructure policy that's in there. We are looking at that right now, and this um, fiscal year, we, you will get a report back on that. Great. Councilmember, just to add, uh, the purpose of this report in many ways, similar to the financial status reports, are to do the transactions necessary to move monies from one project to another to ensure that there's uh, work con continues on those projects that have already been approved by council. Uh, via motion or through some other policy direction. So in many ways, this is kind of a, a, a cleanup effort to make sure that, that projects get the funding they need uh, immediately uh, to continue that work. And, and as uh, stated, this is the first financial, uh, first construction project report. There, there will be other subsequent reports this fiscal year to do, uh, look at other projects like the one you mentioned earlier with respect to the West Valley. Thank you. Anything else, members? Okay. There's no objection. Then we'll go ahead and uh, approve the CAO's recommendations with the addendum that's been uh, provided. And uh, members, on item number six, I misspoke. Uh, we actually have to approve a refund claim on that matter, uh, not receive it. So, if there's no objection to approving the refund claim, uh, that'll be the action of the committee. All right. Uh, is there uh, anybody who would like to offer? public comment on items one, two, three, or four. Please raise your hand. Seeing none, public comment on those items is closed. Is there anybody who would like to offer general public comment? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing none, general public comment is closed. And we'll now retire to closed session um, on item number, which, which are we doing first? Number four first. So, um, We'll go ahead and move to the other room members, and we'll begin with item number four. <clears throat> Patience, everyone. We're back now in open session, and uh, uh, our next item action item will be item number five, five. yes and uh, members this is um, well go ahead Mr. Sayad, item number five is the city administrative officer report relative to request to increase funding for an attorney conflicts panel contract with the law firm of Bernie Nixon Bernie Nixon for a representation in American with Disabilities Act compliance matters related to the CRA LA a designated local authority and successor for the former community redevelopment agency of the city of Los Angeles all right. Uh, any further discussion about this item, members? Or if not, uh, okay. we can. I can give a brief overview. Or you don't need to. It's no. okay. We'll uh, go ahead and approve the recommendation um, without objection. That'll be the action of the committee. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, that brings us then to item. Let's see, six. We did. The next item is num item number eight. The budget motion to deal LaBange relative to instructing the city administrative officer to add a new project entitled Highland Park City Hall, the old bank building, to the 2014-15 MICLA program and report on project scope, timeline, and budget. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Bernice Hollins, Office of the CAO. 
This property was acquired through eminent domain in 2007 for development of constituent service center in CD1. A rough order of magnitude um, estimated the cost between seven to ten million dollars. This was based on potential use discussed at that time um, and the size of the property, but again, it was just a rough order of magnitude. BOE also completed an assessment of the condition of the property at that time, which does have a building um, that has local historic designation. Um, at this time, CD1 currently has two field offices, but does not have um, a neighborhood city hall. Um, we would need to be able to provide a formal estimate um, of the overall cost of the project. We don't believe the um, prior 2007 estimate is um, current. Um, and so the motion proposes to set aside $500,000 in MICLA funds um, to complete design for the project. When was the property acquired again? 2007. 2007, okay. And that acquisition was through eminent domain. Okay. Council Member, uh, if I could just add, uh, the language, uh, the way the motion reads, it would, in essence, authorize uh, not just the $500,000 in expenditures, but make this project part of the MICLA program. And therefore, uh, whatever cost, it, you know, whatever the cost will be to to put the building together, uh, in essence, as it will be authorized it's because it's part of the MICLA program. So it wouldn't be limited to the $500,000? Potentially, no. It would be potentially. It would be part of the MICLA program and then the subject. Yeah. So, um, all right. members, before I, I, yeah, Mr. Englander? Um, I was just wanted to see what recommendations were going to come out of it. Well, I, before I spoke. My suggestion would be um, that we really don't have before us what the uh, re requirements for this building would be, what the potential uses of the building would be as a municipal building, um, what departments might be able to utilize it. Um, I think it would be helpful for the committee in making a cost-benefit analysis to um, have the CAO come back with a a needs assessment and a, a some recommendations on potential uh, occupants of the building, tenants of the building, uh, whether within the city family or potentially externally that might be able to generate some revenue to offset some of the costs. Mr. And with that, if we could also look at it not um, perhaps in a vacuum or on one particular location, but if we're going to do sort of a needs assessment on that type of municipal building, look at it uh, citywide from a perspective of where are areas served by population where we have municipal buildings and where we don't. So I think it should be taken in context. Um, perhaps I'm looking at it from, from how many, what do we have around within a mile radius of each municipal building to the next municipal building, for example. Uh, so if there's one in Van, our Van Nuys municipal building, for example, compared to, so I think we could, we've got to look at it from the totality of how we service the city as a whole. Because it's coming out of the MICLA pot. Because it's coming out of so a citywide pot. And it also, we have a, um, if we can add to that report, uh, where we're at with MICLA financing, because we've got to take that into context of um, understanding that we do cap out at a certain dollar value. And there's a lot of things that are online we haven't yet financed. Um, the third phase of in-car video we're looking at. Uh, we're looking at, a, without going through the laundry list, and I don't think that should be part of the report, but where we're at with MICLA financing, mm -hmm. um, because we've got to consider that a $10 million, for example, expenditure in MICLA could tie our hands for future years for some, quite some period of time and things we're trying to accomplish, both with the police and fire and other things we're doing as well. And if, if there's other things that are queuing up to get in line for MICLA. I know we've had discussions recently about uh, making some of our, our necessary technology investments, uh, potentially by using MICLA, uh, and that's certainly of global importance. Mm -hmm. Mr. Blumenfield? I have all, all the same questions, and, and I mean, you hit the, a lot of the things you said we don't know were the questions I was going to ask in terms of what, what departments would use this, who's going to use it, and, and even something very basic what's the difference between a, a municipal building and a neighborhood city hall? And, and why, why this qualifies as a neighborhood city hall versus a municipal building? And maybe just 
I know we're going to get answers to all the, the specific questions, but just out of curiosity, what, what's the difference? That should be in the report. It should be in the report, but I, they probably have an answer to that. Generically, what, what's the difference between a neighborhood city hall and a, and a municipal building? Uh, Maria Cardenas again with the CEO's office. Uh, there was a policy that was adopted maybe five to seven years ago that described more a constituent service center. Um, actually, I don't remember if the policy was just presented to ITGS or if it was adopted. And it had to do more with providing city services in um, constituent service centers. Municipal buildings, I think, they're just historically where they've been located. So some of our neighborhood city halls are in municipal buildings, but not all of them are. We also have leased um, municipal, we also have leased uh, offices for various council districts. Some are owned, some are in the old municipal buildings. So, so my office is in a municipal building. Your office is in a municipal mean, building. Why is it not a neighborhood city hall? Or could I call it a neighborhood city hall? Or would I be off track to do it? I think when we report back, we'll come back with uh, looking at that policy and, and coming forward with recommendations. That was one of the items that we wanted to do in terms of the strategic planning that we're doing because we do have, I think there's 18 um, neighborhood city halls throughout the city, which is three more than the 15 council districts. So that's one of the areas that we want to look and, at. And besides the one in Van Nuys, are there, is there any other one in the Valley? I have the list. Yeah. Well, there's Van Nuys Municipal Building, and then there's the Marvin Browdy Constituent Service Center right next door and the West Valley. And as an example, you know, ours is not a neighborhood city hall. <clears throat> I don't have a district office. It's a community service center, and it is different. So, yeah, putting definition to these one day might well. make some sense. So you mentioned a strategic planning process that you're going through relating to municipal buildings and city halls. Yes, one of the, well, there's two areas that we want to look at within our um, municipal facilities, um, asset management, strategic planning unit. One of them is the nonprofit policy, and then one of them is the, okay. the location and the services provided through constituent service centers, municipal buildings. Where are they? What services are in them? How fully occupied are they? You know, how should they be uh, reused or restacked? So... As to those latter points, <clears throat> set aside the nonprofit part, but those latter points, um, what's the status of that strategic planning process? We're just starting that right now, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, we have staff that can report on the MICLA capacity. Uh, I think that was a question that was asked, if you want to hear that now. Well, I think, I think the expectation is that we're going to hold this over. Uh, the recommendation would be to hold this for 30 days for a report back uh, along those lines. And that can, the capacity, MICLA capacity can be included within that report right. back. Okay. Um, w and if I could just a ask for one more thing, maybe you could kind of give us um, some anticipated timelines and what you expect to be the resolution of, the str of that strategic planning process, because mi that might actually also inform what steps we may take with regard to this particular agenda item, because it's it would fit within that strategic planning process, it seems to me. So when the report comes back, let's just if you could include in that a reference to um, what is going to be included in the strategic plan and when you anticipate having that coming back. Okay. Okay. Anything else, members? All right. So thank you. To throw into the stew of, of report? No? Okay. So is that all clear? We had, okay. So with, uh, with that, we'll hold that matter uh, and expect a report back in 30 days. That brings us to item number nine. Item number nine is a motion to use our parks related to various actions to fund a streetscape project in coordination with the Eagle Rock Neighborhood Council and Northeast Trees in Council District 14. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Armando Ruiz, Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. So can you just give us the thumbnail version of why this transfer is necessary? What was the problem that... Uh, so occurred? this, uh, uh, the Eagle Rock Neighborhood Council made an expense in uh, 2000, excuse me, in 2011 for a, a community improvement project. Um, they paid the vendor, and unfortunately, uh, that project didn't go through, so they were given a credit back. So basically what they're doing is they're asking for the funds back to contribute to a community project uh, in this fiscal year. 
that's the thumbnail. <laughs> okay. So, so they actually made the expenditure? They actually made the expenditure, and um, the project was pulled afterwards. The vendor didn't do the work, so they, they gave the full refund. Okay, and it's, it's that refund that was swept? Yes, that's correct. Got it. Okay. Council Member, um, I do have a, a amending rec an amending recommendation. Uh, this is actually something that we had worked with the department and we're going to include in the first financial status report. Uh, and that was before this motion actually was, was scheduled in committee. But, but our recommendation would be to appropriate the, the funds um, requested from the cash balance of the neighborhood empowerment fund um, as opposed to the reserve fund, which was, uh, was what the fund that was stated in the motion. Right. Which makes sense that this doesn't impact the reserve fund. And that's because right. the reserve fund does, uh, these funds do not revert to the reserve fund. They actually stay within the fund, uh, the neighborhood empowerment fund. And, and members, just for a little bit further context, you, you will recall that um, we have, over a f several budget years, swept surplus funds uh, that w would have otherwise been allocated to neighborhood councils, but we've made exceptions where there have been um, encumbrances of those funds. And this is a very odd situation where the money was actually paid out, Correct. the credit came back, and um, so it was not only um, encumbered, it was actually spent. Correct. So uh, this is a Unlike most of the situations that we get with, that are related encumbrances, so yes. Quick Mr. question, and it is very rare, and and um, and more of an exception than a rule. Yeah. Um, and so, with that, just a question: Why wasn't the work done, or why was the project canceled? Um, I honestly, I would have to look into that a little bit more. But I I'd like that on the record somehow, sure. and I think it's important to state. And here's why: not for sure. this particular neighborhood council, but. Um, I don't want to, I want to ensure that we're not setting a precedent where and and you know neighborhood councils are probably much better quite frankly and I think more responsible than a lot of the departments where money that's swept from departments or otherwise where we're setting a precedent where they go out and uh, have a, a purchase agreement or an acquisition mm -hmm. or something for a project they know perhaps in the future won't get done and try to say there's now a precedent and they're going to, they want the money back to re encumber that um, or redesignate it towards another project mm -hmm. as a way of holding it. And, and I'm sure that's not what happened here, but I'd like to get on the record what did. And so why wasn't the project done? So if you can let me let us know sure. um, before this comes to council. When is this scheduled for council? It's not scheduled yet. It's not yet. Okay. okay. And I think so, that's important. So if you can get that back, um, maybe one way to do that would be if you can get it get that information to me when we do introduce it at the time of council I can explain the situation on the record then or if there if you can is there some way that we can get a memo in the council file um, still recommend it to to yes. move forward sure. and then just get a memo on the council file prior prior to it coming to council we'll do that okay Definitely. that'd be great. great thanks and the funds originally were from where from that council districts um, Discretionary yeah. funds? Yeah, from the funding program for the neighborhood councils. From Eagle Rock's neighborhood council appropriation account. Yeah. Okay, anything else on this, members? Okay, with uh, those changes, that will be the recommendation of the committee. And uh, that there being the items on the agenda. Nothing more before us. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.